Hello, welcome back to my Global Digital School of Art. And if you're a newcomer, a big welcome to you also. Right now, for the students who uh, have uh, seen one or two of my other videos, uh, you cannot but help notice that I am a little bit sort of uh, sparing with my materials. Um, there is logic behind this, by the way. Look, look at me. Uh, I've been around an awful long time. Uh, and I was around uh, when I was a boy when food, was, not only food was rationed, but uh, clothes and even car, everything was on ration. So therefore, um, I learned how to uh, use what materials which were avail available to me at that particular time. And we've now come back to into a little bit of a world of austerity. So. It means to say that one of two of you may be struggling a little bit as well. And art should not just be about materials. Um, yes, it's lovely if we've got beautiful brushes, reams of paper, uh, and we can practice and just chuck them away at will. Uh, but life is not like that. Uh, it was not for me as a boy, and it will not be for one or two of you who are watching this video either. So. Yeah, look, I've been using computer paper. Oh, hell, that computer paper. If only we had some of that. Uh, so, therefore, we had to tear pages out of a book if there wasn't too much writing on it and use the back of uh, envelopes, like so, or even the inside of envelopes, uh, even brown envelopes when we could. And now, look, what I've got here looks so, huge, uh, huge areas. I can actually paint, but obviously I can't paint uh, with my delicate translucent uh, watercolours. Um, so I need a little bit of help. So I tend to think of uh, the delicate watercolours as like a, a, a violin plays very delicate notes. So in this particular case, I need this little bit of Chinese white in. Back in my days, it came under the heading of poster colour. So, with this, I can now play a cello, uh, which has got slightly heavier notes. And it's not translucent, uh, so therefore, it means to say that I can paint on uh, brown paper, and I can paint on my rejected watercolour paper. So... That is what I'm. this lesson today is really all about. So, there's no point in me just play, picking it up and playing this cello. Um, I need to run you through the notes of what it can do and what it can't do. And you learn how to use it at what it wants to do, not what you want it to do. And exactly the same, with the, the same way with the delicate watercolours. Uh, they get those little water stains around them. Um, yes, you don't want too many of them. So you don't want to knock so many out that it no longer looks like a watercolour. You know, it's, it's not supposed to look like a photograph. It's supposed to look like a watercolour painting. And so when we come along with this, this is supposed to look exactly what it is. And I'm, for want of a better phrase, it's known as body colour, okay? Now it can be called gouache, gouache, um, but that's a, gouache and gouache these are, it's a whole new ball game. So this is just a little uh, aid to our violin. So I'm going to teach you what it can do, what it can't do, uh, before my next video where I will actually try to play a tune on this. Now, if you can master some of this and then play it in conjunction with your violin, so in other words, you, your main body uh, of your painting is uh, uh, watercolour, uh, but it can be um, assisted here and there with a little bit of this, makes all things possible. So let's get this lesson underway. For the uh, viewers who have been following me from Word 1, uh, look, you will probably 
recognise this. This is my little sacrifice uh, cherries. Look, I've even got some pen work on there from the, the hollies. And look, here's, here's some of my sacrifice apples. So, look, I, and I said from word go, save this paper. Uh, right now, this is a good bit of quality uh, watercolour paper. Uh, the apples, uh, they're cartridge paper. Right, I wouldn't bother to save uh, the um, computer paper. But look, this is what we're going to do. Each time I finish uh, doing something, and I was doing something else here. Look, here's my palette. So what I'm now going to do is, look, I'm going to do this. All right. Splash it all over, don't matter where it goes. Don't worry too much about the colour either. Um, other than, look, there's, I've got some red there. And I, I won't mix in too much red. Uh, the, the reason being is because, look, that will turn to the mud, right? Um, I'm not looking for um, a muddy piece of paper here. So, look, I can do that on there and do it on here. So, this is the sort of thing which one could do um, at the end of, so, so that you don't waste <laughs> any of your colour, right? Uh, so, that's enough, right? I don't overdo it because you'll start to destroy the surface of the paper and that is something which we don't actually want to do. Uh, what you can do in order to stop um, destroying the paper here's a good point, another good way of doing it look pour it on get some more water on there yeah anywhere that's quite nice actually that, that look that's almost wet on wet isn't it so I'll put that to one side if I want to roll it around a little bit like that, I can do so. Might be, might make it a little bit more interesting. Might not. Um, same with my other one here. Let's pour some on. Flop it about. There we go. Right now, I will leave that to dry off totally before I do it again because I don't want to disturb the fibers on the actual paper and therefore look all I've got is what could, one could describe as a wasted paper wasted um, paint uh, off my palette but it's not wasted because I am going to use it and because I'm using what could be described as waste material, there is no pressure on me. I can play around with this as much as I like. So I'm going to let that dry off and I'm going to come back and put another coat on it. Here is my box of budget paints. Look, I've used some of the rose matter there uh, and some of the cobalt blue. But look, in the box here, there are colours which I haven't even opened. Um, look, I've got a Veridine green there, and I've got a light green, I've got a sap green, I've got a bit of raw umber. So, look, I'm going to start using these up, because nothing, nothing goes to waste when it comes to me. Um, well, apart from a few of the pies I eat goes to my waste, but look, I'm going to put these on my palette. Put that to one side. Get plenty of water. And put another coat on. Look, I'm going to flick it on. Let me get that in, make sure that's in the camera area. Now look, if you've um, done a few of these sacrifice grapes, and there's a couple on there which uh, you're quite quite pleased with, um, just put a date on it, right, and put them in a folder, and you might want to look at them in a year's time, and see what sort of progress you've actually made. So, 
it was never wasted paper anyway um, because uh, while you was doing those cherries or apples or whatever it is you were doing you were still actually learning so um, that's in your head uh, you might have thrown some of the paper away which would be a shame um, but you don't throw away what you've got in your head right so I'm just flicking away on here now I, I, I'm trying to get rid of some of these uh, little white areas I don't really want those um, I don't mind if tip it on okay can you see where I'm going with this one now all I'm doing is saving the paper since saving the waste paint which in all honesty will just stay in the box and I'll never use it if I go and buy another box I'll now have twice as much wastage uh, or unopened paints so I'm going to be using these uh, look I'm, I'm going to be doodling trees uh, later on uh, so when I come to do <laughs> trees I'll doodle in some very strange colors uh, because I want to use up some of those paints right, it's like I say look be, be very careful try not to disturb the actual uh, surface of the paper right, I'm just going to run that around now oh that's beautiful I love that I haven't got a clue what it is, but doesn't it look lovely? I'll have to go one once more again at an extract because I want to actually bury the cherries. Um, so I can either wait until I've done a little bit more painting and I've got a messy palette. And let, let's face it, after all is said and done, if you've got a messy palette, what do you do? You just wash it down the drain, don't you? Right. So if this goes down the drain, right, doesn't matter because you've learned something from it. Um, well, hopefully you will. Right now, the interesting thing is when I do this, and I'm uh, uh, doing it with students, it is the very nature of things that, okay, I've got more experience, but. <laughs> they will always turn around and say, why is yours always more interesting than mine? <laughs> it, it's just the, just the way life is, isn't it? Uh, in reality, it's not. Uh, but they look at it and it looks more interesting um, because they think I know what I'm doing. So what I'll do is turn around and say, look, when we come to uh, get to work on this, um, any of you offer me whatever it is you've got right providing it's nicely covered um i will show you that yours is as interesting as mine although i won't actually see yours because of this distance teaching take my word for it it is whatever you do it will be interesting um, you just need a little bit of imagination to go with it. So look, I've got this other one here, and it's a little bit bluer. Um, doesn't matter. Let's sprinkle this one up. Um, because I have not got a clue at this moment in time what it's going to be anyway. So it may well be that blue could be interesting. Right, you don't want to sit here watching me splash away here, do you? Right. Or do you? <laughs> there you go. But I'll come back when that's fully covered. Okay, look, uh, the uh, paper has buckled a little bit, hence uh, you can see it's dropped into these troughs. Um, but not to worry, look, here, going on with my next coat now. Look, if you look at my palette now, you see, look, nothing goes to waste. Look, empty plate. Okay. Plonk this on there. Shake it around a little bit. Talking of empty plates, look, I was saying to you earlier 
that I grew up when we didn't waste let anything go to waste um, which included and this may sound a little bit strange and you wouldn't know this would you uh, well one or two of you might um, going back to the days of rationing um, and empty plates it was an imprisonable offence to leave food on your plate <laughs> problem is I can understand it but they could never police it it didn't really work uh, and the reason being is they never actually got anyone in prison as a result of it because if somebody had left food on their plate and they were reported um, before the case got into court somebody had come along and eaten the evidence <laughs> well they would wouldn't they you know they were hungry <laughs> Right now, let's try and get back to what I'm talking about here. So look, now I've got this lovely piece of paper, right? And look, I've even got one on the back. Here is my splash up paper and it is now totally dry. And look, I've got here some little card mounts which I always keep handy. And so what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to take these and I'm going to look at, move them around my splashed painting and look for something interesting. Let me just zoom this one down, uh, in, there we go. Right, now, look, that one there, that, that's the, uh, the little interesting area I saw when I was rolling it around. I can go that way with it, I can go that way with it, portrait way with it. Uh, oh, that looks interesting, it could be something there. Uh, and I can move this around to various parts uh, of my splash up paper. Uh, even with the cherries grinning through, I could possibly use that. Um, or look, I can put a dark one on, see what that looks like. I've got a larger one, I can put a larger one on. So look, there's some nice glowy areas just here. I'm in a little bit too close for this large one, so let's get back a bit. Look, there's some nice glowy areas in there. Uh, I might be able to use those. Uh, right, now here's my uh, other one. It's a little bit on the blue side. Um, let's pop that on there. Look, okay. I'm not sure what, what I'm seeing there. Look, this is a little bit like... Um, activating your imagination in the same way as um, your imagination starts to flow when you're looking at clouds or you're staring into an open fire and you see the flames and you can start to imagine all sorts of um, dogs cats or whatever um, and this is what I'm doing here look I'm staring look I could possibly turn that one round that way round that might be Oh look, oh look, there's a little bit of background there, uh, maybe a hill, maybe trees, I don't know. Maybe I could do something with this little bit uh, down here. If I can't find anything, then what I'll do is I'll just splash it up again. Uh, and then have another look. Right, so now look. What I'm going to do here is, look, I've been down the road. And look what I have found. Whoa, excitement, excitement. Here we go. Now look at that. A little bunch of wild flowers. Now, it's interesting um, because uh, I, I walk down, a, and it's an urban road, and a lot of people will tend to see flash cars uh, and designer handbags and things like that whereas I see this sort of thing uh, all little odds and ends in nooks and crannies um, look what I've got I'm going to zoom this in quite close here look I've got some clovers look I've found some daisies uh, even some buttercups try not to damage them too much look I've got a buttercup there uh, a little bit of, uh, not sure what these, uh, I think they're called bird's eye. Um, and look, I actually found some dandelion heads. Um, I did have a full-blown one here somewhere, 
Uh, there we are. Look, I had a full blown one, uh, but unfortunately as I was walking home it was a bit windy <laughs> and time ticked away because <laughs> it's a time clock and they've all gone. But nevertheless, look, I've got a, a little photograph of one which I will show you. Now, what I'm now going to do with these is stop the camera for one moment. Okay, right now I'm back again and look, I've got my little um, flowers and I'm just going to lay them on my splashed up paper uh, just randomly there we go right now what I'll do is I'll just put my little frame around them to see what I've got there look oh they're really beautiful now right uh, because the frame is making you focus down on these uh, uh, and it's like I say you can walk along the road and you'll never see them but I've now framed them out look I love the way this one's dropping over the edge of the frame there it's not trying to escape right so I might just use this uh, over the edge of the frame which I tend to do in some of my paintings anyway um, so now I'm going to show you how we can actually go about painting these using this um, body colour. Uh, right now, it's, it's not gouache. Um, gouache is a whole new ball game unto itself. Uh, so, this is a, a, a mixture of uh, my watercolours aided by a little bit of uh, body colour. So, that's what I'm about. While I've uh, got my little uh, bunch of wildflowers, I thought I'd take an opportunity to uh, show you one of my miniatures because I was saying that these um, little paintings we're going to do, they are little paintings, they're not miniatures, they're little quiet relaxing paintings. So look, here's one of my little miniatures in amongst the daisies there. I will zoom her in. There we go. One of my little tiny walnut fairies. Um, what I really like about these is that um, when the kids come by and they peer at this little tiny fairy, they go all quiet. <laughs> I think they're frightened she might just jump out of her bath. <laughs> I'm now about to uh, put on my serious tutor hat and give you a warning about this. Look, here is my box of student range paints and look, here is the Chinese white. I don't even really like it being in my box, by the way. Um, so, normally speaking, I would lift that out and put one of the other half pan of colours in there. So, look. Here is my Chinese white. This comes from my cheap, not cheap, budget range of colours which I purchased. And here I've got a gouache designer white. It's called permanent white. And this is the one which I tend to favour. And this tube, I can't even see the price on it, believe me, is years old, right? I'm hardly using any of it at all. And you need to keep these completely away from your water painting transparency watercolour box. So look, here I've got an old box which actually appears to be empty. Well, one or two of the pans are empty. This will always happen, by the way. But they're not empty. So I'm now going to use them. Uh, I'll get this one out the way, close it up, put it away, totally in another box, put it away from your, the, your working area. And look, this is another one of the budget um, tubes and it's gone a little bit hard, absolutely no problem. I just get a pair of scissors, whip the end off of it, open it up and there's still more paint in there. loads of paint in actual fact it's it's a little it's a little bit like your uh, toothpaste right? when it's empty 
it can last for another two or three days, can't it? Right. So look at look, that's got paint inside it. So bear in mind what I'm doing. Keep your brushes and your uh, Chinese whites and your old box to one side and only bring them out when you're going to do this. Make sure that everything else is gone, all right? Because that little bit of white will start to contaminate your other colors. So when you come to do your lovely, beautiful translucent colors on there, they will come out a little bit on the milky side. Okay, I'm now gonna move those out of the way. Moment of truth, uh, and this is going to be um, technically very, very difficult for me here because I'm going to be in very, very close and I've got very, very limited time um, in which to explain the things I need to explain uh, to give you some sort of understanding into this uh, form of painting which I'm about to do here. And think of this, it is watercolour. Um, but in actual fact, uh, your delicate uh, translucent watercolours are, are, are a little bit like a violin. And these colours, which are body colours, which I'm about to put on, are they're another instrument within your painting orchestra. Think of, think of this as a cello. And in this particular case, uh, it, I'm just going to be playing the cello, really, by itself. Um, if you can master that when you um, come back and you can play the violin and the cello in some sort of harmony um, because they're both stringed instruments so look let's get this cello underway and we are going uh, rather extreme here because we're we're just messing about on uh, damaged paper anyway so <coughs> Here I've got some small brushes. I've got a number three, a number one, I've got a zero, and I've got a triple zero. I've got my um, uh, sacrifice paints here, and I've already dampened them down. Um, so, because I'm on little tiny brushes, the lot, I don't want to go scrubbing about on those little, um, with the little brushes, because I will destroy the brush, uh, not just the brush, but when I come to do the painting, um, it won't, well, it, it'd be all over the place and it will start to destroy you. So stay relaxed, dampen your colours down. Look, here's my little uh, off cut one. And here I've got a little bit of Chinese white. Right now, on this next section, uh, where I'm just going to demonstrate uh, one or two notes on this. Um, let's call it a cello. Um, originally I had in actual fact planned on just casually splashing up and uh, doing a little painting but now having looked at the time factor so far I'm beginning to realize that if if I try to give you some of the technical stuff and the painting um, it would all be rush 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 and the painting I will have to go on to either time lapse or speed painting. Uh, yes, it could be entertaining uh, and interesting, but in reality, you won't really learn that much. So, much better that I devote the whole of this video now uh, to the technical side, so that uh, any other little videos coming alongside, I can refer them back to this technical section. And you will already have this knowledge anyway. So, look... Uh, you will find it a little bit sort of um, a little bit disjointed um, in reality I'm going to be packing in a lot of stuff um, in this condensed video which normally speaking in a, a live class would take two or three weeks so bear with me if it gets a little bit disjointed um, as long as you get the information that is the name of the game. So I will also be coming in very, very close and that's going to give me a few technical problems. I'll try and keep my head out of the way. Okay, here we go.
Right now, here is my little tiny bit of uh, Chinese white, and here is my yellow once again. Now look, what I'm going to actually do is I'm just going to play a single note on here. Uh, where should we go? Let's say over here. And this is my plain yellow. Right now, I think you can see it, or just about see it. Let me zoom that right in close now. There it is. And although I can see it, as it's drying, it is in actual fact starting to disappear. So what I now need to do is to add just a little tiny touch of my Chinese white to my yellow. And look, always add the Chinese white to your color, uh, if it's red or blue, whatever it is. Um, because if you try to add that little weak colour to the white, the white is so strong it will virtually bury it. So, right, look, there's, there's my little uh, first line. And I'm now going to run this line alongside with that little tiny bit of Chinese white in there. Okay, that is a single note. And on here, it... Uh, on, on my monitor it looks white whereas in actual fact it is a very very pale yellow and so sometimes when you're watching me painting you, what you think is white is in actual fact just the reflection from my lights above on the actual water so it will start to go in quite flat now we can have an interesting note um, Let's get a little bit more. We can make that a little bit more interesting by coming in broader, letting it go, and coming back again. Like so. Now what I can do is I can, I've just cleaned my brush. And I'm going to take a little bit of the water off of it. And then I'm going to run the brush on the green alongside and just thin the note out a little bit. Now, you can, what you can see there is water. Now you can only do that, let's say twice, because if you continue on, you will in actual fact revive the green or blue or whatever color you've got underneath. So that is one note we've got there at the moment. I'm now coming up to uh, my second note, and it is a, a little larger. So look, here we go, broader. Now, it's still looking very, very white on, on my monitor, but it is pale yellow. Right now, here is the problem with this. Because it is opaque, in other words, we, it's not transparent, we can't see through it. It is a single, flat, um, bland note. So what we need to do is to add a little bit of uh, sort of variety into that uh, bland note. And this is what I'm going to show you how, how to achieve this. Because if you look at that, uh, it is flat, uh, it is bland, it's a little bit like, if, if I'm looking at the door, uh, the door is interesting, but if I look at a little bit of the paint on it, it's not particularly interesting. And that's, so what we're doing here is we're ending up with a big hole in our paper. So this will apply regardless of the colour. Now, you'll hear me washing my brush. So. When I go and get some red, which I'm about to do, um, one of the things which this will, it will start to cloud my water. And in other words, it will contaminate my water. And so if you don't keep changing your water, you are going to end up with a tertiary colour. 
there's the, well you can hardly see it, it's the turpsy colour. In other words, even though it's got a little bit of uh, white in it, Chinese white in it, it is turpsy from the point of view it's turning to mud. So you're going to need to keep changing your water just in, in exactly the same way as you do with your um, violin. In other words, have two sets of water on standby. I've now got my red and look, it is plain red and I'm going to lay it down as a single red note. There we are. Now, you can see it at the moment, but as that dries, it will once again, just like the yellow, it will start to disappear. So what I need to do is to add just a little touch of Chinese white into it. Now look, there we go. That's a red note there. Can you, yes, you can see it. So it is now visible and it will dry back, by the way. Um, so you think, oh, that's a bit strong. But in, that, in reality, um, as with all watercolours, they will dry a little bit lighter than what you that they appear when you first put them on. Right now, if I want a brighter red than what I've got on there, because in actual fact that is really pink, what I will do is that I will lay down a little bit of white, a, a flat white note. There we go and I will allow that to dry. I will then put my red back on top of that. If I put my red back on it now, it will um, start to pick up some of the green which is underneath and it will turn to, instead of red, it will turn to a muddy colour. Right now, look, if I want a larger leaf, um, I'm going to run into this uh, flat note problem again. In other words, look, there's a narrow one, there's uh, a broader one. Now here's a bigger one still. Yes, I just check that I'm in range there. And that, in turn, will also dry matte and rather boring. Now look, you need to um, understand that when we're on the, the, the watercolours, the delicate ones, we're, we're working from light to dark. On this cello, we're going, uh, not unlike oils uh, or even pastels, we're going from dark to light. So try to think of it as... Uh, Everything is very, very dark, and then we gradually, slowly turn up a dimmer switch, and things become visible. So that is, in actual fact, what will happen here. So, look, if I put in a... Here we go. Let me put the camera back. I'm in too close. That will do it. If I want to do a larger leaf, and I come up with a similar sort of situation to that. So here's my larger leaf. Yes, I can use a larger brush, um, but you can already see that that he's got just a little bit on the streaky side anyway. So when I come back to put my uh, lit areas on there, just supposing it's a, a this dandelion which I propose painting and it's got this sort of ragged leaf on it. If I want to put some uh, the leaf veins on there or I want to get some lighter spots on there what I need to do is to allow that to dry and then I'll come back with this tick tick motion. So what I can actually do, never mind about the actual colour of this at the moment, 
I'm just drying my brush out. And what I will actually do is come back and use a dry brushing effect. So that's not dry enough. Let's, okay. I will come back and put a dry brush effect on there. Right now by putting that dry brush effect on there and allowing it to dry before I put another coat on there I'm not reviving the green underneath. I think I'm too early but I'm always a little bit impatient so I'm just going to dry my brush out and come back again at a slightly different angle then stop let that settle down let it dry and come back yet again right now I'm now going to move up to this note here what I can actually do to that I can get a small brush and it's just got plain water on it and I can drop a puddle on there leave it for just a moment right and I can lift out some of the colour I'm going to need to get him very, very close on this one. There we are. And I can lift out some collar. I've just put a blob of water on there. And I'm overworking it. And look, I'm starting to get what could be look like an eye of a needle. There we go. And I could do the self same thing with that, but it's a bit weak anyway. So, what this is now dry, and I'm going to plonk a little bit of red on there. Right, here is my red. I can put another little bit of red on here if I so wish. That will dry away, by the way, because there's very little Chinese white in there. Or I can put a little bit of red on top here. But you're only going to get one hit at that, by the way. Uh, because if you hang around in it, it will actually start to go pink. Because you're reviving the Chinese white. Here we go. So if I just suppose I'm going to do a berry or something like that and I want it redder still, I will allow that to dry off totally and I will then come back and put another red on there without reviving the two layers which are underneath. Right now, this is the nature of this instrument. So... What we need to do, in exactly the self same way as with the um, watercolours, which has got that tendency to leave those little stains on there, which I personally, I like those little stains. Uh, I don't like paintings to be washed out to a point where you're not sure if they're a painting or not, because they should look like paintings. So, I'm just mixing up a little bit of colour here. Okay, let me take the camera back again. There we go. 
Right now you can see that leaf starting to disappear. We can just about see that one there. So look, what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to put in a nice big blob. In fact, I want it larger still. There we go. Right now, that is quite interesting in shape but it's quite boring on the inside. Let me now zoom this one down. Or not down, in. There we are, look. Now it's looking a little bit whiter, especially around here. That is because there's still water on there and the, the, uh, the water is reflecting off the light. So what I will do is I will allow this one to dry off and then I'm going to uh, interfere with it. Um, to give this note a little bit of sort of um, quaver within that single note because this is really what they are. So while I've got my brush up, I don't know, let's see if I can do this, zoom back just a little bit. I'm just making sure my brush is a little bit dry. Look. I'm now going to dry brush this area across here. Oh, sorry, I was out of range there. And I may need to do this four or five times in order to get what it is which I want. Now, you can go back and forwards on this one, by the way. I've now picked up uh, a little bit of my uh, watercolour paints uh, without any Chinese white in it, by the way. Um, because this dark green, it may appear dark green, but it's really not that dark. So we can talk about highlights and we can also talk about low lights and I love low lights so look I'm now going to run a low light alongside there now it's looking a little bit brown but it will dry out quite dark and I will do this I will do the same round here now when you come back with these low lights, don't overdo them in exactly the same way as don't overdo the highlights. Because one, if you overdo the highlights, you'll cancel them out. They're no longer highlights. And that will also apply to the low lights. It's starting to dry. You can see how dark it is. It's, it's even darker than this. And I can go darker still. Right now, if we look look back here. Uh, okay, I'm a little bit uh, distance back. Look, there's my leaf which I've been putting my dry brush on. Here's my other big uh, blobby um, note which I've got down there. And what I'm going to do with that is exactly the same what as I did with the, the, the white one at the top there. And so I'm going to zoom that back down again. Look, that this leaf there has almost disappeared. Right, that one there is almost disappeared because that one has got the dry brush on it and that one hasn't. Right now, I've got, uh, uh, once again, plain water on my brush and I'm going to blob this one out with just plain water and look what I'm actually doing is I'm pushing my highlight up to that little tight edge let me zoom this in once again I'll get in as close as I can there we are now is looking a little bit white around there that's not white that is the actual water so as that dries out, um, it won't look quite so white. So look, I'm going to now put in another one here. There we go. 
lift a little bit more of this out. Now look, I'm just going to do that with my brush. Now because when you start nick nicking, I know what you would do, just like uh, my students do. Instead of using your fingers to just clean a brush out, you would just lick the end. <laughs> right, so once again, I shall remind you, as I remind my students, by all means do that. I understand that because there is nothing more important at that moment in time than your painting. But just bear in mind that this, some of this yellow uh, is an actual fact. Uh, distilled, condensed cow urine. <laughs> they feed them on uh, special plants uh, to get that nice bright yellow. So if you don't mind that, look, we all suffer for our art. But most of the most of the students, they do tend to stop licking the end of their brushes. Right now, I am now going to come back with a little bit of my just pure Chinese white and I'm going to put get, get now, I'm going to put a little highlight on there so if this was a little wing I've got the highlight on there I can now come down to my knit knit brush and put in my low lights. Once again, don't put in too much highlight, don't put in too much low light. But look, what I can actually do with my low lights is I can now come back on top here and put in like little veins on a wing. Can you see them? Yes, you can. And if they're a little bit on the clumsy side, I can just take my nick nick brush and I can just narrow them out a little bit. There we go. Right, so I've made that a little more narrow now. Um, I'm just picking up a little bit more paint here. So, I can put these little vein bits in, or I can put in little sort of segment pieces in there. Can we see that? That is that is in actual fact the actual colour in there now. That's not that's not the actual water. But even if I'm going to do that, I won't use the maximum strength of my low light. Because once I've done that, I've got nowhere to go. So, if I wanted to cut out the wing, either on top or underneath, once I've used that low light up, I've got nowhere to go unless I'm prepared to sacrifice and kill off a little bit of that low light in order in, in, to make it actually work better. Right, can you see where I am there? Yes you can, just about. Now, because I like to fiddle, and for no other reason, I'm now going to come in across there. Now I'm going to let that dry, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with a little bit of nick nick dry brushing on it. Just trying to get a little, sorry, just trying to get a little bit of shaping on that. And from this one little thing which I've done there, let me just zoom that back. My imagination is now starting to be activated. So in other words, although I don't actually know what it is, I'm very tempted now to do another one alongside and turn it into a pair of wings.
And this is what happens in this game. Uh, when you're... Um, you can see the possibility. This wing is very heavy. So I need to wash it back. And I can do that. This is lovely. Um, I can play this note in and out. Um, but what I must do is I must give it time to dry. Um, because if I don't, I, I'm just going to end up with uh, rather a lot of sort of um, tertiary muddy sort of colours up there. Right, while I'm here, while I'm here, I haven't gone anywhere. Right, here we are. Here's my red at the top. And I'm just going to plonk another little bit of red on top of that. There we go. Don't hang around on it too long. Now, you can see how much redder that is than this section over there. It's because this has now got two coats on it. Now, look. I've got a big plate here. And it's my old plate because my old plate is... Uh, is not too white. So here's another alternative for you. Look, I've got a blue tile. And sometimes it can help because I can see my colour values on here a little better than I can on a great big white plate. So something like a blue tile, here's an alternative. Look, Here's just a little bit of um, grey card. So I can see what's going on there. Uh, probably better uh, on, on those two than I can on my big plate. All right. um, I'm just going to stop and have a sip of my tea so I can actually have a look and see what I've been doing. Right, I've had my cup of tea and it is important that I actually stopped because I needed to look back at uh, some of my clips because uh, when I'm chatting it's all unscripted and I've forgotten what I've said and what I haven't said. So I need to recap. Uh, look, I'm back here now. I'm just going to dry brush over the top here. I think you can just about see that. A good way of dry brushing, by the way, is to um, put a little bit of uh, your colour down and leave it on the side then, and then run your brush out, just pick up a little bit of that, test it, and then come back and dry brush over the top. The other thing I need to say here while I'm doing this is, look, all the colours, I'm, I've just been using red and um, yellow, but all your colours are intermix, uh, intermixable. So you can get the full spectrum of your colours. Right? Now, so one more thing I need to say is that talking about the spectrum of the colours, I want you just to have, look, see this water I've got here. This is very, very cloudy. It would be because of the Chinese white. But look, you can see the little bit of red in the bottom there in the sediment. So it's got red and yellow in it. So if I don't keep cleaning, um, changing my water, um, it will keep giving me that sort of slightly muddy effect. So that bit I've covered. Right now, the next bit which I'm going to look at here is look, I'm going to move this down, there we are, look, this is uh, like the little daisy I was showing you, and it's just done in plain white there at the moment, so what I will actually do is that, it, and it's boring, it's a boring note, look, I've got a damp brush, and I'm just going to lift out a little bit of that white, Heading it back to the center of the flower. 
And look, I'm doing this one head on. Um, and they're not very interesting flowers when they're head on. So it would normally be at an angle. But look, this is a, an exercise we're doing here. Look, I'm cleaning the petals back to get rid of some of that white because, well, there we are. Look, if I just, if I don't do that, the whole flower is highlight and I, I don't want, I don't want a situation where I can't come back with a highlight because I've already used it up. Can you see what I'm doing there? Let me have a look. Yes, you can. Um, and I'm coming back to the center. Then I'm going to let it dry. It's coming in quite dark there because look, I'm picking up a little bit of the color underneath. I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to come back and put a blob of white in the center there. Okay, I think that's enough for you to see what I've actually done there. Done there. Look, I've killed a lot of the white off. Right, now this is just now a damp dry. Look, you can see I've gone all the way around. Now I want to put the white back in the center there. Now look, I don't want to stir it up. So what I'm doing is I'm just blobbing it straight down. That way I'm not stirring up the green underneath. And I'm going to let that one dry and then I'm going to do that one again. Right, the first coat is dry, so look, I'm going to do it again. There we go. I'm now going to let that dry. Okay, it's not quite dry, but look. What I'm going to do now, look, I'm so mean with my colour, look, I'm going to nick a little bit of colour off the side here. And in the centre, I will just drop a little bit of that in there. You can just about see it on the camera. And I shall also pick up a little bit of this and just pop out one or two little bits coming off the side here. Yeah, all, what I've actually done there is I've just deepened round the centre little button of the daisy. Right now, using clean water, I've picked up a little bit of my raw yellow. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop that yellow on top like so. I'll zoom that in a bit closer if I can. There it is. Right now I will let that dry and then I'll come back and I'll pop another little coat of yellow on there. Nick nick. Right and back again. Now look I'm just going to put a second coat on. Like so. Right now, the yellow is now dry, and on my brush, I've got um, uncontaminated, pure Chinese white. And what I'm going to do is, uh, look, I'm just going to drop those in now. And what I don't want to do is, I don't want to do the whole thing all the way round, um, because then I will be losing um, my little highlights. So, look, I'm going to turn it round here. And I will do three full petals. Well, wait, there we are. Three full petals. And then I will do a couple 
park peppers. I've just water, picked up a little bit of water by the way. Just a little bit bland, there we go. Look, you can see these highlights there. I will, I can, I don't want that sudden jump into one. So I'm just going to ease that one in by doing this one alongside. A little bit weaker. And it is by doing this that your eye spots these little highlights and your imagination will fill the rest in. Oh, oh, so where's it gone? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? There it is. Uh, and once again, I'll come back to this business of low lights because look, I've just put in a couple of highlights. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with a, just a couple of low lights. Right, here's my low lights and what I'm going to do is to, I'm just going to pop them in around this outer edge and maybe just a couple in the centre there. Okay, they're, they're a bit hard in the centre so I'll just water those out just a little tiny bit. There we are. Right, so I've watered that and these ones I'll just tease those out just a little bit coming out into the daisy petals. I think I think I think we can see them there. And once again I don't I don't want to do too I don't want to do too many of these but that they will have their effects in the same way as the highlights do. So look, you can see how in actual fact I can build this into something uh, a, a lot more interesting by playing the notes and have some sort of, of uh, variation on the actual notes. That's, that's what mainly water you can see there, but it will in actual fact start to disappear and I'll just bring it back. Right now, I think um, you've got sufficient information there. Now look, as I said all along, uh, this in itself is not particularly exciting to watch but it is the engine room and now you know what can be done on this uh, cello painting he says I can I always carry on tonight it's shocking um, and I wouldn't normally paint a daisy head on uh, because it's a little bit in your face I would turn it slightly sideways to make it a little bit more interesting. Right now I've just been uh, fiddling around and uh, laying another coat to, uh, on these petals um, to strengthen them up a little bit. Right now before I round this up look this first video all I've been doing is introducing you to the uh, new instrument. On the second video um, having shown you one or two of the notes, I will play a little tune. Um, if you feel that you'd like to watch that, or me in process, um, go to the bottom left of your screen and press on my name or that little picture of me there, uh, and that will bring you to my channel. Uh, one other thing which I wanted to mention then, Look, uh, when I first visited YouTube, um, I was trying to play or improve uh, my blues playing on my harmonica, would you believe? And I saw a subscribers button down there in bright red. 
and uh, I was very apprehensive about pressing that because the word subscribe seems to indicate you're going to be paying a load of money. Right. Now that is not true. I think they ought to change that word to follow really uh, because if you press that button it will bring you to my channel. It won't cost you a bean but on my channel you'll find one or two other little items which I've been uh, playing around with which may be of interest to you. So by all means there's a chair waiting for you, reserved 24-7. So come along, have a look, uh, see uh, one or two of the other little items which I've got on there. Right now, I'm going to show you um, one more thing before I close this video up. Look, if you've been overworking one or two of these petals a bit too much, you'll find that you'll get a build-up of body colour on there. So in order to get rid of some of that or if you your brushwork you've you've done a little bit too much brushwork on there get a little little bit of clear pristine clear water uh, and do what i did on the video when i was uh, recovering from tatty grapes and just add a plain puddle of water onto the area which is a bit messy or a bit built up and then just leave it alone put it on a slope and let gravity do its own thing because sometimes um, that gravity can paint better than I can with my brush all right so hopefully we'll meet again <laughs> I'm tempted to break into song look I know where, but I won't know when. But hopefully we'll meet again on another video. So bye-bye folks. Enjoy. <laughs>